We are back for a, another round of the full build of the RC10B64 Team Associated Buggy. And for this video, I'm going to be completing bag 9, which is all the shocks for the car. Um, you can see we got some parts on the trees. Um, so I'm going to cut all these parts off of the trees and then we will get started. All right, so we got everything trimmed off the trees. Um, you should know that these plus fours for the shock ends, two of them you trimmed off in a previous bag. So you'll have two of them within bag nine and two of them, I think it was like bag seven. Um, so to make that full set, Okay, so we have some extras here. These, this whole link here, these two, they're used if you're using a front sway bar, um, which I am not for this build, but if you um, are using a sway bar, you would have already used these in the front. Um, and then these are extras. They use the same part tree for the two wheel drive as they do the four wheel drive. And so, the four-wheel drive would use these for the sway bars in the front. Um, so those are not going to get used. I'm going to put those aside. Um, and then over here, I didn't cut the shock bushings off the tree because I'm actually going to use the machined ones, which is this part number right here. Um, you don't have to use them. You can use the stock ones. It's not super critical, but I just like to have super smooth shocks. So I, I'm going to integrate those into my build. And then over here, we got the 1.5 piston, which I'm going to use for my setup. Um, and that's this part number here. Um, so if you want to copy my setup, you'll need that. But yeah, let's jump in now and get this build going. Um, so the first step here is you're going to put these O-rings on the shock body. So this small one slips on right there. And this bigger one slips on here. And we'll do that for each of the bodies. All right, we got all those on. So then the next thing here is you're gonna put these threaded collars on and this, these four other large O-rings are gonna slide in to these collars. Um, and so these go in to prevent these collars from loosening up when you're running and you, you kind of have to finesse them in. They all, you can see they kind of get like that. You just have to kind of work them in. There's a groove that they sit in. And you just work them in there. Like so, I like to kind of feed it in on one side and hold it with my finger and then just push the other side in. All right, so we got all those in. And the next thing here is I like to take just a little bit of shock oil. This is 35 weight, but you can use any shock oil and I just like to lubricate that o-ring to make it easier to slide on so we'll do that and then you're gonna put these on the shock body and the trick here is you want to push 
these things all the way down and make sure they're fully seated on the top of the thread before you start trying to thread these on. And they should thread on easily. If they aren't, then you probably need to push somewhere and they're slightly crooked, but it shouldn't be hard to get these on. And you just wanna thread these. I like to thread them close to the top, like about like that. And you know, we'll do final adjustments on those later. So the next thing here is we're gonna build the, the cartridges, so the seals that go in here. And if you're using the stock build, you're gonna use one of these hat bushings and the smaller diameter goes in first. Then you're gonna use a big spacer here, one of these in, down here. At, well, sorry, it'd be the hat bushing where the small diameter goes in first, then an o, a, a X ring, then a thicker bushing, then another X ring, and then finally another hat bushing, and the hat this time points up. Um, for if you're using the machine spacers, and the first one is a flat thin washer X ring, then thick washer X ring, and then hat bushing. All right, so given that, I like to use this Protec RC O-ring grease. And so we'll put first these thin washers in each one of these shocks. And if they don't go in, you can use your hex wrench to kind of push them in make sure they're not crooked okay so those are in then we grab one of these o-rings and we stick it in this o-ring grease i just like to get it completely coated and we stick them in there Okay, I'm just going to push these in like so, and then we're going to take this thicker bushing and push those in. And then we do the next row of X rings okay so then we'll push that X ring down like so, and it's pushing the washer, those thicker washers in. And then finally this hat bushing and the, the, near, the smaller diameter points up. We're gonna stick those in. And you know, the, the rim of the hat goes into the body. So then we'll screw these on. And I like to screw them just before, right, right as they touch the O-ring. And I don't like to fully tighten them until after I insert the shaft because um, when you screw these all the way down, they put the O-ring in a slight a bit of compression. And I like to do that after I insert the shaft just to make sure that you don't rip the O-rings. Alright, so 
The next step here is we're going to build the shaft piston assembly. And before I do, this kit comes stock with 1.62 hole and 1.72 hole. They put the 1.6s on front, the 1.7s in back. But the team guys have discovered that the two hole pistons don't work very good with the 13 mil shocks. And so they've been drilling a third hole in these pistons for the 13 mil shocks. And so we're going to do that. There's a little dimple. I don't know if you can see that, but it's right over here. There's a little dimple that you can use to drill that hole. And I have these um, drill bits. I'll post a link where I got these, but I have all these drill bits that I got from this little place in Oregon. And a little pen vise hand drill. So, um, yeah, we're going to... I'm gonna drill these out and then I'll, sh at the very end, I'll just show you what it looks like to do one of them. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do these and then we'll come back. All right, so we got these pistons all drilled up and you should know that on the 1.5 pistons that I bought, we drilled and we just use this little pen vise here to drill a third 1.5. So we have a 1.5 by three hole piston for the front. And then for the back, we drill, we use the 1.6 two hole and we drilled a third 1.7 in there. Um, so slightly different approach, but that's what I'm gonna use for my setup. Um, and I highly recommend that you drill three hole pistons. AE doesn't make them yet. I'm sure they will soon enough, but they don't yet. Um, so once you get these drilled, then the next step here is to put the pistons on these shafts. Uh, make sure you get the right ones. And you'll notice the shaft has threads on this end and it's smooth on the other. And so that piston goes on the smooth side. And make sure the long piston's going back. Short, um, sorry, long shafts going back, short shafts in front. And you can see there's a little recess on this piston. And so that goes down. So you put the piston on. Then you grab one of these little, sorry, actually it's the other way around. You put, you put this washer on, then the piston with that recess down. And then finally one of these little screws goes in. And before you put it in, you're gonna need to thread lock it. does not take a ton of thread lock, but you definitely do not want to skip that step because otherwise these will work themselves out and you will have a guaranteed DNF when you lose those pistons. And so I use some shock pliers to crank that down. And I always grip it just ahead of these threads you know, this is the area that goes through the seals the least. So I always grip it there. Do the same thing again here for the next one. Yeah, on the 1.5s I buy, I didn't buy the, these ones don't have a recess. I didn't buy the flats or the, the thins, I should say, about the flats.
So if you buy that same part number, you won't have a recess like that. So then just make sure you put the number designator up on those. All right, so we got the final piston assembled here. And so then the next thing you want to do is you want to put these through the shock bodies and make sure you get the long bodies with the long shafts. And you also, there are internal and external limiters that you can use to control droop and for the setup, I'm using no internals. Um, looking at the manual here, I don't see any internal on theirs either. But anyway, so I'm going to stick this thing through. And I like to kind of rotate and push at the same time. And you can see we get a little bit of that o-ring grease and we'll just wipe that off the rod end and then we can finally now screw that down and i just do a hand tight it doesn't have to be crazy tight so we'll do that for each one of these All right, so we got those all installed. <clears throat> so now you're gonna wanna put the rod ends on and there's three different lengths. There's zero, plus two, and plus four lengths. And um, in the, the manual build, they use a plus two on front and a plus four on back. And for the build that I'm doing, we do the same. So is what you wanna do here is again, hold it just slightly above the threads. And so we're gonna do a plus two on front. Actually, before I do this, there is some external limiters. The setup I'm using, they actually use an X ring as a limiter. And so we're gonna stick that on and then We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna screw this plus two rod in. You just wanna make sure you get these on nice and straight before you start wrenching them down. Okay. And I'm going to do this all the way to where it bottoms out. Like not super tight because you don't want to make it protrude out this end here where the ball goes in. Um, do it to where it, you feel it kind of bottom out on the threads. And then we'll come back and we'll actually use calipers to adjust that. Um, stroke and you can move the rod end in and out to adjust that All right, so now we're gonna check the stroke here and you do not measure, you measure to the stroke, at least for what the way the setup I'm copying and not including this X ring. So you're just gonna slide that in the middle. And so we're at 28. Stroke twenty 
which is exactly where we're already at. So no adjustments. So this one's a little bit. I'm just going to tighten this one just a hair. Should be able to get the 28 on that one too. Yep. Give this one a little tight and just a. Okay. Those are both at 28, and then the other ones are at 22. There we go. So those are all now adjusted correctly. Put these calipers away. Um, so now is what you want to do is put these little balls in the rod end. And so stick those in. Like so. All right, so next we're gonna fill these things up and I always like to put one of these little screws on the, the uh, hex driver to start. Um, and so is what you wanna do is pull these shafts all the way down and then fill up most of the way and for my rear shocks i'm using ae35 weight and so we're gonna fill it up you know like a i don't know a quarter half inch to the top and then you're gonna slowly move the piston up but don't come out of the oil and then move it back down and you'll see it releases a bunch of air that was trapped under the piston and give those bubbles time to come back up to the top and maybe move it up and down slowly a couple of times but give them time to come back to the top and then once you've done that then you can fully fill that shock close to the top and then screw this cap on and the first time you put these on it can be a little bit tricky to find the threads like i find if you back it you'll hear it kind of snap into the threads but don't make sure you don't cross thread it and then this tool we use to do the turnbuckles you can also use it you put it right down here and you bring one of your hex wrenches in and you can use it to tighten the cap. Like don't go crazy tight, but you can tighten the cap. So then holding this shock at roughly a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna move this shaft up. And this sets the rebound, but I like my shock's dead so we're gonna move it all the way up if you want partial rebound then you would go to that desired rebound and insert the screw but we're gonna go all the way no rebound so you push that wipe off all this excess oil that comes out and then you insert this screw into the cap, making sure you get it in straight. And then don't go super tight on this one because you can strip it out pretty easily. just until it hits snug. 
and then try to get as much of this oil off as you can. And now you can see when I put that shock, there's no rebound, which is what I wanted. And you can see that it does pull it in some when you fully pull it out, which is 100% normal um, because of the way these shocks work. So don't be alarmed about that. But once you get the spring on, it'll minimize that. And once the shock gets to working, the way emulsion shocks work is they I'll put this screw on here really quick before I fill it all the way up. Um, waiting for those bubbles. Work their way to the top. Fill this one up. Yeah, emulsion's less critical. I mean, ideally, you'd get most of these air bubbles out just to be consistent with your builds. And you can put these on a shock stand and let them sit for a couple minutes, and that, that'll ensure that they're air-free. But emulsion shocks run with some air in them no matter what. Just the the way it works um, because you know you when the shaft goes in it takes up some amount of oil volume and then when you pull it back out you end up sucking air in um, because of that so anyway 45 degree angle and push this out and if you push this all the way in and you don't get any oil to come out, then you need to take the cap off and fill it up with a little more oil. But you should be seeing oil coming out every time. That's the only way you're gonna get a consistent shock build. to do is once you get two of these built I just like to make sure that they seem to be behaving in the same manner and so I'll pull these both out and then just watch them and those look almost identical so you know, you feel good that that it, those are built the same. All right, so I'm going to finish the fronts off camera. Only difference here is, is for the fronts, I'm going to be using 42.5 weight in the fronts. Um, so I will do these and then we'll come back. Okay, so the final step to complete these shocks is putting on the springs. And the kit comes with blue rears, red fronts, which is what I'm going to use. I like to put my little paint stripe right next to the bleeder screw, so I put them up to the bleeder screw. And then you want to pull this limiter away. And then you have three different cups to choose from 0, 5, or 9 millimeter offset. And for the kit setup and my build, for the rears, we're going to use 0. So we'll stick that on there. And you kind of want to push, and it snaps a little when you get it right. And then we'll do the same thing here again. Paint stripe. 
up, move that X ring. And we're going with zeros in the back. Oops. Yeah, and just make sure they snap in on the shaft and then push them onto the top of the rod end. Okay, and then the fronts, same thing, paint stripe up. And this one time we're gonna use the middle size one, which is the five millimeter offset and push them in. So you can see here that the rod end actually goes in to that cup. And you want to make sure it snaps in into the center of the shaft and then you want to push it on that rod end to get it seated correctly. All right, so you know the final step of this bag 9 build is putting these shocks on the car. Before they, I do that, I'm going to clean up this area a little bit. So I will do that and come back. All right, so let's stick these guys on the car. Um, and I, I like, you know, the manual shows these when you install the bleeder screws that you install them to where they point down. But I actually like to have mine point up. The reason why the manual does that is to try to protect them from getting damaged, but I actually like mine to point up. And so I have them point and the reason why I like to is sometimes you want to bleed these um, during the race and they're easier to get to when they point up. So that's why I point mine up. And then I point this shock slit most people like to point that outboard, but I actually point mine back because I find running in the motor limited classes that sometimes you'll get hit by somebody or you'll hit somebody and that front impact will actually pop these spring cups off. So I put mine, you can see where that cup is pointed aft. This little flange is pointed forward and the bleeder screw out. So we'll stick that on and we'll just put this nut on here hand tight for now. And we'll grab the other one and set it up the same way. Spring cup slip back, flange forward, bleeder screw out, and tighten that nut on the beam. There we go. Okay. Then you're going to secure these to the arm and the kit setup and my setup is using the outermost hole and you use these long screws here and they go through the arm. Oh, there we go like so. So we're going to stick that in there and then yeah push it until you kind of get it through that eyelet and then finally come in here with the two and tighten that down and don't you don't have to wrench super tight just take up all the slack when you tighten these screws to make sure everything feels good and it does 
All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing for the rear shock. Again, I like my spring cup slit to point aft, and this little flange points aft, bleeder screw out. So we'll stick that on like so. Flange aft, spring cup aft, put down like so. All right, so then on the bottom, uh, Whalen's using a two millimeter spate, uh, two millimeter ball stud washer on that which means okay so then on the bottom and the back um the setup i'm copying actually uses a two mil ball stud washer between the arm and the shock which means i'm gonna have to come out here and loosen this some to get a little more threads out of it. Let me turn this upside down to make my life easier. So yeah, you want to just make sure that you're gonna get the threads to go all the way through this nut and hit the nylock. Okay, and then the final step to not forget is, is I've done all these nuts hand tight, so let's tighten these fully down. There's that one. All right, so then we just want to check everything, make sure it feels good, and it does, so that completes our shock assembly for bag nine hope you guys found this useful and if you do please like and subscribe